now that we've configured the client side version of our application to check for logged in, uh, I have to say that we've been doing this a little bit wrong. Not technically wrong, but we've been doing more work than we need to. We don't need to store the Google pick inside our local storage. And we don't need to store the Firebase ID token inside our local storage. And the reason why is that Firebase does it for us. As you can see here, it stores our user ID, our display name, and some other information, including our photo URL, our token, all kinds of other stuff in there. Uh, because it does that, we actually don't need to do any of the mumbo jumbo we already did. There's a much easier way to do it. And so I'm going to refactor this application a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of this um, local, anything that references local storage, I'm just going to get rid of. So instead of saying local storage .get item firebase token, I'm going to get rid of that. And you're going to get some errors. Um, I'm going to get rid of all of this goodness right here. Uh, let's see, what else am I going to do? Uh, yes, local storage, get rid of that. Okay, get rid of it all. Um, yeah, I'm going to get rid of all of it. Anything that references the local storage, we don't actually need. The reason why is because Firebase gives us a nice little method that does all of it for us. Instead, whenever we check if logged in, we'll say this. We'll say var user equals Firebase dot auth dot current user, just like that. And then we can just say if user. So if the user exists, if there is a, a Firebase dot auth dot current user, then we run our check login function. And that'll actually do all of that work for us. Don't believe me? Let's see what's inside there. I'm just going to console.log this every time. So the second this loads up, we'll console.log to see if there is a user. Cool? I have commented out everything in the checked if logged in function, except a line that says var user equals firebase dot auth run the function dot current user. And then I've console.log the user. So we're going to see what happens when we start load up the app and how Firebase handles this for us. Now I haven't touched the other two functions other than getting rid of every reference to local storage so we don't technically need it. I just want to do that so I can show you how local storage works and then we're going to let Firebase handle it all for us. So I'm going to refresh this application like this um, and I'm actually going to get rid of the part that says Firebase.id token, delete selected, Google photo, delete selected, and in my console, by the way, I see a null statement. See that? Interesting. Inside the application, and that's trying to log the user, by the way. If you click on firebase.auth.js, that's constantly logging the user. It's clear that the user is null. And since null is a false value, everything that relies on the user existing will be false. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this too. Everything inside there. Sweet. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and sign in with Google, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, cool. Firebase user has been added again. I look in the console, check it out. Now when I console.log the user, what do I get back? Here's the user, display name, email, um, my token. Do I have my photo, photo URL, and a refresh token? Some provider data, my user ID. So I can pull all that information off the user very easily. So the user, and if you really want to just make a, a good user out of that, we'd have to take a look at this object and pull out only the things we want. So right here, I'm going to say var user equals firebase.auth.current user, which, and then I'm console.logging it. That console.log for a user after I've signed in is why we get all this information here. Do you see that? Cool that so far? Any questions about this? 
did you write if you don't get didn't get anything then you don't have var user equals firebase dot off dot current user or you're not constant dot logging the user so as Josiah pointed out right now if I refresh the page even if I sign in it'll look like I'm signed in but every time it prints out null in the beginning and now if I type in firebase dot auth dot current user I have the user if I refresh it looks like it's null if I type in firebase dot auth dot current user again though I get the user so we are still logged in that should work the question why is it not working now let's go back into our function here and let's uncomment out all of this thank you let's see what's up so we get all that stuff back so at least it'll like see if the user exists and let's uh let's refresh the page and let's do it again okay still no still don't have a user sign in with google still get the user this is so odd hmm what we can do is to make sure that this function only runs when the window is loaded, we can say window dot on load equals a function. And then we can run the check if logged in function as soon as the window is loaded. Let's see if that solves any of our problems. Now the window is referring to our browser. In this case, once the browser the document is loaded, then run this function. Let's just make sure that if the window is fully loaded, I only want this function to run once everything is loaded in. And let's try it again, let's see if it works this time. Let's press refresh. Still not getting it, huh? Firebase, but then we run it, firebase.auth.currentuser. And there it is. So what do you think the problem is here? This is a little funky, huh? Well, it's not be it, we still get the user as soon as we run in the console once everything is ready to go. And if you run it, if we just say like right here, let's just call this firebase.auth.currentuser. Let's just keep calling it, see if we can eventually get it. Refresh again. Come on, work with me here. Am I getting it? Oh, sorry, let's console.log that, I apologize. All right, refresh, let's see what happens. Come on, come on, work with me. Still no. We can't get that current user, and yet the second we try to, right here, it's working. That's pretty frustrating. So the question is, how do we fix this issue? That's what I'm gonna do in the next video.